Hi everyone, I'm Ben Mims, cooking columnist for the LA Times, and I'm here today with Lisa McCree, anchor for LA Times today, and I'm very excited to be here because I'm bringing Lisa in on the recipe development process for some barbecue sauces for the summer. And now Lisa, do you want to tell us how this idea came about? Well, when the pandemic began, everybody shut down, no more dinner parties, and a lot of people had all this old booze in their pantry left over from that wedding or that school fundraiser or Christmas. I was like, what can I do with this, Ben? And Ben's like, well, let's get saucy. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I came over, Lisa and I cooked together, and I kind of got a sense of how she entertains, how you cook, and I noticed that you were you were a sauce queen. You like to make sauces and keep them around for the summer. So tell me how that started. Well, it's the only way you can entertain on the fly. If you mm -hmm. love to have people over, but you think it's too stressful, spend a couple hours on a Saturday or Sunday and make some mason jars full of sauces. Mm -hmm. Have them in the fridge. You can throw in a protein, some corn on the cob, chop up a watermelon, and you have a summer party. Mm -hmm. This is a way that you can have a great get together that feels super safe because it's all outside. Absolutely, and have like feed a bunch of people and you know depending on if someone likes something spicy or something sweet you can have lots of different options to feed people with. So I took the challenge on to kind of take off Lisa's booze that she had left over and turn them into some barbecue sauces, some relishes, things just to keep around all summer to serve with your grilled food. So I'm gonna have Lisa taste these. First time she's tasting them. Uh, and so we're gonna see if she can figure out which booze is in them. Um, and then we're gonna talk about like ways to serve it and like things that would be great to serve it on. So this first one here, I'm gonna have you try. This is kind of like the most basic barbecue sauce. Um, it's got some onions, it's got ketchup, you know, the, the usual things. All right, let's just take a little bit of this. By the way, what a great way to spend the morning just eating barbecue right? sauce and ribs. <laughs> All right, so, mm, it smells so it's got, good. It's got onions, it's got some Worcestershire, some ketchup. That's very traditional. Yeah, usually you want your sweet, you want that kind of tangy vinegar. It's, I, I can taste the sweetness. So the sweetness you're getting from, I'll go ahead and tell you, that's from Coca-Cola, which is also kind of that's a very southern thing, very southern thing to put We in know there. that. That's who we are. So this is uh, a Jack and Coke barbecue sauce. So we got some Jack Daniels whiskey. Got some Coca Cola. This so is Coke so great. Before. Next time you have a cocktail party, you just collect all the, exactly. the glasses that aren't drunk and just boil them, <laughs> and you've got our sauce. Strain out the ice, boil then you're it down, done, throw done. some ketchup, and you're good Delicious. to go. Delicious. I love it. Great. It's not spicy, but it's got a nice um, round flavor to it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. And you want some that are more on the sweet side, some that are more spicy, so you give everyone options. So this next one, very similar, but it has a secret ingredient that I think you'll be able to taste. Talk about a Southern sauce. So let's try this on some chicken. How about we do that? Okay, little piece of chicken. Sorry about the fingers. So this one is also um, ketchup based. It's got some vinegar, but adding a different element of sweetness, similar to the Coke. Does this have molasses in it or honey? It has a little bit of molasses, yeah, yeah. I can taste that. Yeah, it also has some peach jam. Oh, so, delicious. You know, peach jam, this has a little bit of scotch, so a little smokiness mm -hmm. to kind of balance the sweetness of the jam. You have the molasses, you know, vinegar That's and what it is. So, the, the booze yeah. cuts that super, super sweet taste that yes. leaves you, it's kind of cloying sometimes. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So delicious. So this next one, I think obviously you can tell what the main base is <laughs> for this one. Um, but I wanted to kind of, you know, some people love ketchup and I love mustard, so I wanted to kind of make a mustard sauce. So this is a honey mustard. I'll go ahead and give you that. But I've added a few secret ingredients. Um, yeah, there's some pork ribs for that pork, as well. I'm telling you, honey that mustard and pork, okay. Absolutely. So I'll give you a little bit on the plate here so you can try it. So I kind of wanted to bump up the flavor of the honey and the mustard, which is kind mm. of spicy. Mmm, it's a front of the tongue spicy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's also, you get a little bit of extra spice from turmeric, which oh. helps kind of make the yellow pop a little more, but also a little golden rum, because you know, the rum and the honey. Again, we're kind of, we're kind of. <laughs> I'm a fan. I want to do this one because I know where it came from. There's a great restaurant in Napa, California called Zuzu, uh, but they serve Moroccan lamb chops. 
and they serve them in dishes like this with little rib chops and then drizzled in this sauce. It has so many ingredients, right? You made your own. It's insane. When, when Lisa gave me the recipe, I was like, this has 20 ingredients. This is crazy. How are you going to taste everything? You do, though. You mm. get the spice. You get the, like, the warm star anise. You get all these different flavors. So there's a lot going on here. There's ketchup. There's honey. There's cardamom. There's cinnamon. There's everything. This so is my favorite. For this one, I wanted to kind of play up a little bit of the sweetness, too, um, of the honey used in it. So just some good old bourbon. You know, you can use whiskey, you can use scotch. Like, a lot of these are kind of interchangeable, just like a caramelized brown liquor. Oh, you can use in, delicious. In those three, for sure. Delicious. Yes. Okay. So this next one we're going to do is one of my favorites. So this is a pineapple chutney, kind of like a major graze mango chutney, mm. but using pineapple instead. And so I put some whole vanilla bean in here. Mm. So you have the kind of tropical tartness, you have the vanilla bean, which when you take it away from a lot of sugar, it's not so baking. Right. You know, it kind of has a more tropical flavor too. Some cinnamon. So I want you to taste this and let me know what you think. I'm going to use chicken because it seems sort of neutral, but what yeah. would you do? I think because, similar to the Zuzu sauce, because this has so many spices in it and things going on, you know, lamb would be great. Definitely, you know, chicken is great for everything. Lamb, salmon, anything that has like kind of a stronger flavor mm -hmm, would be really, really mm -hmm. great. But so you have a lot of sweet things going on here, a lot of spicy things. So maybe something a little smoky booze. I can taste the booze. <laughs> It's delicious. So that's a little mezcal in that. Mm. So you have, because it's it, to me this kind of reminds me of like one of my favorite drinks, which is like a pineapple mezcal margarita situation. So that was right. kind of the inspiration. So you're using all these things. You got the vinegar in there, and you got raisins, pineapple, the spices, a little bit of smokiness. That kind of helps to balance everything. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what chow chow mm -hmm, is? Yeah, absolutely. So usually it's green tomatoes, you know, with peppers and chopped with lots of sugar and vinegar. So this one, we did a tomatillo one. And onions, serrano, and habanero, so it's a little spicy. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the tomatillo salsa. We used to call it magic green elixir at this mm. restaurant in Dallas called Javier's, and I have the recipe. And, and it's, what's great about the tomatillo, if you, if you put the serranos in it, and then it also calls for a little bit of sugar, is that the front of your mouth is like, oh, this is pleasant. This is kind of a little bit sweet. And then the fire sets in. Yes. <laughs> then you have to have a margarita. Which and is great, so yeah. it's, a, it's a perfect <laughs> circle of life. Which, you know, some okay. people, that's what they want. They want to feel the heat. And so this one, this one definitely has that. You know, you leave the seeds in the chili because there's sugar in here and there's vinegar so you want to balance it with some of the spice. Mm. This one has a little bit of tequila in it. Mm. You know tequila, it, it makes sense. You're eating, you're drinking it with the Did salsa Did you bring anyway. any margaritas with you? Because <laughs> I should have. That would be wow, great. that's got a kick. It's got a kick to it. Yeah, yeah. One of the great things about learning how to do all these sauces, not only will you know, it'd be so easy to throw together mm -hmm. any sort of get together. They make great holiday gifts. I'm not That's kidding. True. Yeah. I, I line up jars and do mm -hmm. it. People really appreciate it. Yeah, and you show up to someone's house with a jar of barbecue sauce. That's like better than a candle, better than a bottle of wine. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Ben, thank you so much. I think we should go outside and sit by the pool and eat some more. This was so much fun to taste all these barbecue sauces with you. If you want the recipes, go to latimes.com slash food and click like subscribe and leave comments below and tell us how you want to eat these sauces too.